Hello and happy Friday. And today I'm going to show you two comic book mystery packs. One that has 10 and one that has five. So we can zoom in or zoom out a little bit. So um, and I picked these out for this one because it has this Dungeons and Dragons uh, comic with a character sheet on the cover and that kind of a D&D fan as you might know. So it made me think of rolling, you know, the, for the characters and 18 was the max. So you had your, was this the 12 sided die and then the force, how did you do it? Or was it the six sided die and the 12 sided die to get your, let's see, like if I rolled, so that's 10. Fourteen, so yeah, um, and I even have the very sought after hundred sided dice, and uh, it really does work. So um, we'll set these here, but yeah, I was uh, this this kind of brought back memories. So even down to the drawing of the picture on the character sheet, which was something I always like to do. And this one I got because it has a Star Trek comic and an older Star Trek comic, which I like to find. And they're kind of hard to find, so it's always nice to get one of these. So, without further ado, we can open up. And I'll get this one out of the way, you know, and we will pull these comics out and we'll start with the Star Trek. Um, it's an older Star Trek comic, which I like because these came out when the movies were coming out. Um, this is from 1985. So this is between Star Trek for the Voyage Home and Star Trek V, the uh, Final Frontier. On the back, there's an ad for the old um, Superpowers collection. I actually have that Superman figure right there. Um, and this was a really cool collection to have. Um, and they looked really good for the time. You know, they were by Kenner. Um, Amazing Heroes. Fantastic Four. Doctor Strange. And in this, we have... Starts out with two starships. USS Christopher Pike to fleet. Maintain yellow alert. Repeat, maintain yellow alert. So this ship is named after Christopher Pike, the first captain of... Well, the second captain of the Enterprise. The first captain was Robert April, I think. And then there's a Miranda-class ship here. It looks like. Unless this is just drawn wrong. Yeah, see, there's a couple of Miranda class ships there. And we, I like the old style uniforms. This is like straight out of the movies. And it's like the continued adventures of Star Trek. So if you, if the movies weren't enough for you, you had these. There's um, the Excelsior or, or the same class, which was... Oh, gosh. I can't remember the name of the class for the Excelsior. Yeah, but it's supposed to be the Excelsior. Captain Styles, He was in Star Trek 3. There is Red Tornado. A lot of ship scenes in this comic. Got Nandorian. That's another thing I liked about these old comics is they were just more fun to look at. They weren't all dark and everything. They had the cool, funny aliens from Star Trek. Not the, not 
and I, I'm a big Next Generation fan, but as the shows progressed, the aliens all got muddier looking, if that makes sense. They all got more, they got less colorful and fun looking and more muddy and weird looking. Then we got Starfleet Headquarters. And we got a picture of all the crew. There's a Klingon on the crew. That looks like Savic. But actually, right now, I watch the Orville more than anything else. I really feel like the Orville is classic Star Trek. It's the same feel, whereas a lot of the new Star Trek shows... And, and now, the third season of Picard is pretty good, but the first two seasons, I didn't really care for. And I don't mind the other two Star Trek shows. I've never watched um, Lower Decks. So, um, the next comic is... Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, there you can't go wrong with that. Uh, with the we have Rocket Raccoon. It looks like Captain Marvel. There's Drax, uh, uh, Star Lord, Groot, and Gamora. I wonder what Captain Marvel's doing with them. And they're fighting uh, what looks like symbiotes, like uh, Venom. This is fairly recent, two thousand fifteen. Uh, and it's probably a comedy because Guardians of the Galaxy is definitely a, one of the the funnier uh, Marvel franchises. The artwork is pretty good. And she's with one of the X-Men. Is that Kitty Kitty Pride? And that's a lot of good crossover in this. You've got you've got Spider-Man, X-Men, and Guardians. And Captain Marvel looks like all crossed over into one. Is that the Punisher or not I mean Hellraiser or what what is he? I can't remember the one with Ron Perlman where he sawed his horns off. I, I, I uh, Gamora fighting Venom or another symbiote. Agent Carter ad, which was a decent show. Okay, that was Guardians of the Galaxy. Next, we have an issue of X Factor, an older one, older comic, uh, 1992. An ad for Charleston Shoe on the back. I've only seen this flavor. I've never seen the strawberry or the, or the chocolate. Um, a lot of good old comics. We've got these old... Super Nintendo games. M Macho Man, Randy Savage, Hulk Hogan, The Undertaker, The Mountie, Sid Justice, and Jake the Snake. And X, X Factor. I wonder if that has anything to do with X Force.
I like this old style. This is this is how I remember comics, and I like them like this with a newsprint. Battle Toads. And there's a Ghost Rider. Statue of Liberty makes lots of appearances in comic books. Spider-Man, Superman. And some Fleer baseball cards. Um, next comic is Shadowhawk from Image Comics. Um... There's an ad for a trade paperback. This is from 1993. Slightly thicker paper on the cover. It's kind of like the last one, the same kind of paper and artwork. Classic comic. Mm. Having some coffee. I like the artwork in this a lot. It's very nostalgic. And finally, we have uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, very thick, floppy. Uh, $3.99, so this is later in the game. We have an ad for Weavers on the back. This is 2016, so the most recent yet of this pack of comic books. This artwork is supposed to look like this, but it almost looks like it's a misprint with <laughs> the lines going through it. I know it's supposed to be on TV. Kind of faded, washed out 
the way the artwork is in this. That looks like Rorschach. Open the next pack. And we will start with this Dungeons and Dragons Infernal Tides with a character sheet. And this character has it says plus three strength, plus seven dexterity. Okay. Alright, hold on. Strength plus two. No 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 no. I'm looking at this wrong. Strength is fourteen plus two. 17 plus 3 dexterity constitution is 15 intelligence is 13 wisdom 11 and charisma 16 so it's a fairly good character um the name is criddle rogue level 7 half elf um what's the alignment I don't see that. Let's see. Usually they put the alignment on it, like chaotic evil or lawful good. I don't see that. Huh. Interesting. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here, we got more in the back. A chaotic good. Okay. Male, medium, hazel, dirty blonde hair. Yeah, okay, this is more like it. So yeah, the, the cover is like a, a character sheet, which is really cool. I like this, just the, long, the cover is enough to make me want to keep this in my collection. Um, and I guess these were variant covers, but I think I picked the one I liked the most. The artwork is pretty good. You know, there's a new Dungeons and Dragons movie coming out right now with Chris Pine. And that sounds pretty good. I mean, Chris Pine, generally speaking, well, I'm a big fan of Outlaw King. Um, I, um, that's Trixie. She'd like to come in and join me, but uh, I kind of barred her from joining me in videos for, for a little while until she gets a little more mature because she loves to knock things off shelves while she's in here. So... Yeah, but she will be back. Don't worry. Um, she's a great little cat. She's wearing a onesie right now because we uh, got her fixed. We actually had to wait a little bit because she had had a torsion when we first adopted her. So she already had one surgery right out of the gate. But now um, we got her spayed. So she's still wearing her little recovery suit, which is pretty, pretty doggone cute if you see her.
Actually, if you want to see her, I can let her in for a second. But just for a second. Come on, baby. Okay, just so you can see her in her cool recovery suit. And watch this. If I rub her under the recovery suit, she really likes it because um, it's like when you wear a hat all day and then you rub your hair. So she really likes that a lot because that recovery suit. Just flattens her, her fur. So look how happy she is to get rubbed like that. I mean, look at that happy kitty. You want to show everyone your recovery suit, Trixie? See? She says, this is my, this is my recovery suit. And she's like, that feels good. I need that. She can't wait to, we're going to try to get her out of the recovery suit this weekend so she can, but I think we got to make sure that her incision is healed so we don't want her pull any stitches out. Boy, she likes that. Yeah, it is like when you take off your hat and you just rub your hair. Imagine if that was your whole body. That's what Trixie's trying to say right now. Okay. Well, maybe she can hang out with us for the rest of the video. I think she's going to be okay. The next one is Teenage Mutant Ninja Tur Turtles. Bebop Rock Steady. And hit the road. This looks fairly recent. It's IDW. There's an ad on the back for Winona Earp. Oops, she found the dice. It's her little mohawk right here. Okay, so we got this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic. Looks like Mr. Smith from The Matrix here. I wonder if that's who it's supposed to be. She's in a pretty good mood. 
she's like, Daddy doesn't let me come in here too much. I think it's really funny to see them in these recovery suits, too. Get you all straightened up there, Trixie. Whoops. Let's see how long she can stand here before she starts knocking stuff off. G.I. Joe and the Six Million Dollar Man. Okay. So, the next comic is Mindbreaker, another Dungeons and Dragons comic. And that's pretty exciting to get two in one. These are my first two Dungeons and Dragons comics ever. I think I'll stick them by my, my, my guidebooks. So, this is Mindbreaker. And we've got a, a Beholder, it looks like. Kind of a stylized Beholder. These kind of look like the same characters from the last comic, too. Trixie, come here. Come here, baby. Look. Keep her, keep her eyes on the dice. Oh, gory. They chopped up the beholder. Definitely going to keep these D&D these &D comics. She's just staring at this dice. So mind breaker and then we get some artwork on the back which is this reminds me a lot of the artwork from um, the uh, the old books that's great um, next one is Transformers and back to the future this is probably another keeper it's got Marty McFly and Doc Brown Of course, I'm a big Back to the Future fan. Uh, Sandman add on the back. And it gives you a recap of what's happened before. So we have a crossover of Transformers and Back to the Future. And there's the time machine, the DeLorean. Okay, Trixie, you're making a little noise with these dice. I'll have to give her some pets again.
This is my set of D&D &D dice. I really like this set. Sort of, they sort of change colors when you look at them. They all eventually, and the colors right, they look they're the same color as this hundred sided die, which is sort of a of a purple lavender color. Transformers Terminator crossover too. We've got another TMNT comic, Janiki two, Trixie. Uh oh, she's getting out of my vision. Uh, she's up to no good. Some coffee. Trixie, hold on. She's getting a little bit. That's seven of nine. G.I. Joe. And what do we have next but another TMNT? trade paperback this one is uh uh yeah this is an actual um major yeah comic book here with a hard cover And, you know, if you hear any ambient noise, that's Trixie looking around at things. The artwork in this is really good. Trixie, she's trying to take her recovery suit off now. She's having fun. She doesn't want to be constrained by the suit. She's trying to tear the Velcro. Pretty good trade paperback, actually. Yeah, this is actually really good artwork.
And we get a little ash can in the back. Okay. Another Dungeons and Dragons Mindbreaker. I guess I lucked out. This is just Turtles and Dungeons and Dragons. I didn't realize it would be, but I'm pretty sure that's all this is. And uh, maybe a one G.I. Joe. But I'm excited to have all these D and D comics. to give her something to play with. Okay. It's uh, like the back, the last one that has really good artwork in the back. All right. Before Trixie destroys these, especially these D&D &D ones, I'm going to kind of we got, oh my gosh, it's a Rick and Morty Dungeons and Dragons, and the cover is almost the same. Look at that. This is crazy. They really curated this set. And it kind of goes along with Back to the Future. I mean, all of these are keepers. Holy cow. This is... This is awesome. We've got, and of course the next one is a TMNT. There's a Star Trek Voyager, 709. Star Wars. Just a pretty amazing. Trixie, Trixie, don't go too far away. The last one is a G.I. Joe. It's a minimalist artwork. I guess that's Scarlet or there's Duke. It looks like Scarlet when she's younger or something. Yep, I was right. Scarlet and Duke. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoyed seeing Trixie. Let's get her over for one last encore. Give her a good old under the recovery suit rubbing here. Because she says her fur is called crushed, and this feels good. Yeah, that's so she's having a good day because she gets to explore my room a little bit. And <laughs> she really Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video.
put these back. It was cool to get all these D&D comics. Okay, and I'll see you Sunday. Bye.